last pattern that I'm going to do is called the bark beetle. It's a member of the longhorn beetle group, and these are quite prevalent both in the eastern United States and the western United States. This happens to be another of my favorite patterns. And I remember the first time I fished this, I kind of stepped into a stream out west and made the first cast and caught a fish, and I thought, well, that's a kiss of death because you don't want to do that. Two casts later, I took another one, and two casts after that, I took a third fish. So I guess this fly was a winner from the beginning, and since then, I've caught a lot of fish on this fly, both in the east and in the west of the United States. This is tied on a number 12 2X long hook, just like the other fly that we did before this, the Kiwi Fleetle. But the foam I use is a good bit different. If you look at this, you can see that it's a sort of a variegated black, white, and gray foam. And let me explain to you exactly what this is. I get this foam from Dale Clements up in Allentown, Pennsylvania. It comes in cylinders like this. These are about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter and they're about an inch and a half or a little bit better in length. Now the way to prep this foam so that you can tie with it, you don't want to tie with these cylinders. It's just not going to work. So what we do with these is to take one of these cylinders and simply cut the cylinder in half. Just take a razor blade and split it right in half so you get two cylinders. Then you take one of these cylinders and I've built this little wooden block here so I can lay that cylinder down in the groove. Now I'm, I'm going to warn you about something here. Don't try to hold this cylinder and cut it with, you, with holding it with your fingers. You're going to do the same thing I did. You're going to trim the end off one of your fingers doing it this way. So my advice is to build a little wooden block that looks like this where you can lay that cylinder down in there. Then you take the razor blade just put it right in the middle of the cylinder, and if it's a good sharp razor blade, you can simply push straight down, and you get two nice beetle bodies. Pull that out, you can see what we've got here. Two good bodies for, those, for beetles. So that's what we're going to use for the beetle body on this, is a split cylinder. And use the 3 8 inch foam from Dale Clements. It comes in a lot of different colors. I think there are at least five or six different colors that he has. You don't have to do this in just this variegated type foam. You can use the dun, the gray, or the cinnamon brown, or black, or whatever you like. Those four colors, however, the variegated, the cinnamon, the gray, and the black, I would recommend above everything else. So once we've got these beetle bodies prepped, let's see what we do with them. Again, let me reiterate that what we use on this is a number 12 2X long standard dry fly hook. And you're going to see it's quite similar to the technique that we use for both the Kiwi Fleetle and the Japanese Beetle. As I say, once you learn to tie one of these patterns, the rest of them are just a piece of cake. There's nothing to it. Attach your thread. Bring it back to the bend of the hook. Now we've got a little bit different th technique that we're going to do here. It's just going to be a bit different from what we did with the Japanese beetle and the kiwi fleetle. To get this to tie in the way you want it, take that little cylinder, that little half cylinder, and trim it to a point. Now if you recall on the two preceding beetles, I started tying that foam in right here. You don't want to do that on this beetle. You want to take this little bit of foam here and tie it right down at the back. And that point, once you've trimmed that to a wedge shape at the end, is just going to tie down nice and clean. And just wrap it down good. It's pretty tough foam, but again, be careful. If you put too much tension on the thread, it's going to cut through the foam. So be a little bit careful with it. The body, again, is nothing but peacock curl. In this case, I'll use four or five strands of peacock curl. Again. We'll even up the tips, trim them at that point. And tie them in. Now I'm going to wrap this thread up about two-thirds the length of the hook shank. I'm going to stop it at that point right there because it's important that you leave enough room at the end of this fly to finish it. If you don't leave room, you're going to crowd it. You're going to have a real problem when you try to tie in the wings and the antenna 
and put the head in. So we wrap that peacock forward just like we did in the other beetles. And stop it right about that point there, just about two thirds up the length of the hook shank. Tie the peacock curl down and trim the excess. Again, wrap your thread back and forth through the peacock. It's just going to reinforce it, keep it from breaking loose if a fish's teeth get hold of it. Now I'm just going to fold this foam forward. Again, don't stretch it, just fold it forward, just like that. Tie it off. Then what I'm going to do is just trim this. I'm going to take a little bit more off this by trimming the sides. Get a little bit of that material out of the way so I don't have so much to tie down. And then tie the stuff down. Isn't that a pretty body? I, I love that. And you get that half round foam and it just forms a perfect little beetle body on the top, on the sides. You can see that. The neat thing about this is no two of these are going to look alike. Okay. The winging material is the same chronic ribbon, that mallard number 850 that I've used before. I'm just going to take this thread, bring it forward a little bit, because I'm going to split this wing and then I'm going to tie it down with a figure eight wrap. So we put that wing in, don't make it quite as long as the body, hold it in place with your thumb, tie the material down. Then pull it up, again trim it at sort of an angle, and now I'm going to separate the wings. Again I just use the point of my scissors to do this, scissors are great. If you learn to use them, you've got a valuable tool. Separate that chronic material pull it over to the sides. Now I'm going to use a little technique here to keep these wings separated because on this beetle I don't have an overbody or a shell casing that's going to come over the top and keep them separate. So what I'm going to do now is do a single figure eight wrap. I'm going to take that thread, pull it behind that wing, under the shank of the hook, and behind the opposite wing. Hold the wings down and wrap. That way, your wings are going to be lying on either side of the body of the fly, not on top. You don't want those wings on top. You want them side, lying laterally on the sides of the fly. The antenna are made from this material here, which is javelina or western peccary. Uh, the best source I've ever found for this is, is a company called English Angling Trappings. And I, I don't have the address, but I'm sure that they're listed in a number of different catalogs. I just cut, cut two of these good stiff hairs right there. They make beautiful antenna. And I'm going to tie these in right in front of where I tied the wings in. Notice they're long. They will extend back about, oh, half or full body length back from the uh, rear of the fly. Hold them in place. Tie them down. You can really put pressure on these things. This stuff is tough. It's not going to break, crack, or anything, and it's pretty stiff material. Trim away those four projecting butts. Now I'm going to do the same thing with these antenna that I did with the wings. I'm going to kind of separate them a little bit. Then I'm going to do a figure eight wrap, and that's going to go behind the antenna and behind the wing, and then back up the other side, behind the wing, and behind the antenna. Once I've done that, I can tie that antenna down on one side, bring the thread up, tie it in on the other. So now we've got the wings and the antenna in position. And there they are. Just as we did on the kiwi fleetle, I'm going to take two pieces of peacock hurl and one piece of black ostrich hurl. Lay them down together, even them up a little bit, and trim the tip. 
because the tips are all together now. Tie that in right there where the antenna and the wings were tied down. Tie it in nice and tight. Bring your thread up to the eye of the hook. Again, using this little circuit tester or whatever this thing is called, clip those three together, ostrich and peacock, and twist it a bit. That way it's going to just fuzz out real nicely when you wrap it. Give it three wraps or so. One, two, three wraps. And see, I've got plenty of room up here to tie this down and finish the head. Now, it's imperative that you pay attention to your proportions on this. If you try to crowd that, you'll never get it right. Tie it down. Trim this up. And then we'll whip finish it. Now there are a lot of longhorn beetles. This is just one example of them. So don't be afraid to tie this in brown or gray or black. They're, they're everywhere. They're quite prevalent. They're very common. Mm -hmm.